before we get into the main feature, I wanted to show you something that somebody sent to me. I was contacted by Vern. He has a YouTube channel called The Radio Mechanic. He asked me if I wanted this sweep generator and I said, yeah, okay, that'd be nice. So he mailed this over to me from the US. And then a few weeks later, this also shows up in the mail. So this, so this is an accompaniment for the sweep generator when doing FM alignments. He also sent some crystals for me to rework so that they would get the correct frequencies for, for doing a sweep. He also sent the full manual and here's a photo of it connected up to the oscilloscope and the wiring that he used or the layout. The oscilloscope is a 35 megahertz unit, dual trace. I think he said he bought it in about 87 or 8 or 9 or something like that. And it's in perfect condition as is the sweep generator. I'll put a link in the description so you can pop over and see what he does, but uh, he's very good. He knows what he's doing. So thank you, Vern, for sending this over to me. It's, it's amazing generosity. Before I start sobbing on YouTube, let's watch the main feature. G'day and welcome back. This is a project I've been wanting to do for a little while. This is a Carmen 2 Electronica. It's made in Romania and it was sent over to me by a bloke in Germany. His name was Blitz Rohan, or that's his channel name, that's not his real name. And he watches my videos, I watch his videos. And he very kindly sent this over to me before Christmas. If you watch the video on my Grundig radiogram, he also sent over two output transformers, which I unpacked on that video. And this Romanian radio was in there as well. And at the end of the same video, I unwrapped this and took it out of its bubble wrap. And we had a quick look and that's all I've done. I also suggested you drop over to Blitz's uh, channel and say hello. And uh, he was absolutely wrapped with the response. So uh, thanks for doing that. That's a very basic radio. It has a uh, long, medium and short wave and off. And these two on the end here, I thought they were maybe tone and bass, something or treble I meant. But it turns out they're just fakes. They're, they're, they don't do anything. So I'm not sure if there was a, an option to have extra bits put on or they just wanted to make it look like it had more buttons. I'm not sure. It has a magic eye and it looks like an EM80, just looking at it from here, and it also looks worn out. I'll spin it around, I'll have a look in the back. Here's the back and it's as simple as the front, there's a little cover there for the voltage selector, antenna. It seems to be in Romanian, I assume that's Romanian. I'll see if I can translate the text there using my phone. I saw Shango do this the other day, it worked pretty well. So. So there it is there, it says, attention, remove the plug from the socket before walking inside the appliance. So that's good advice, okay. Now, see if I can read the other one as well. This one here says, attention, strictly forbidden from binding between device and socket. So I guess that means don't ground it. Anyway, that was a good idea from Shango to do that. I'll take the back off and I know Blitz put things in there for me. He's also got the knobs. I forgot to mention that he put the knobs in there for safekeeping while it was transported. There it is. There are valves and more valves. Oh, there's the knobs. It's another valve, I think. No, no. Something else down there. What have we got there? DC WL800. Ah, good. They go in my uh, Grundig amplifier. This is it inside. It looks good. It's got a lot of dust on it, but I can't see any rust. Uh, it's got uh, four valves. It's only got one connection for the AM antenna. There's, there's more holes there, so it must have had other variants that had FM or something, maybe. Oh, not much room for FM in there. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure why it's got all the holes and only using one. Uh, there's a valve missing from there and there. Uh, Blitz has removed those to transport it over. Before I go any further on, I think I mentioned that Blitz actually did a video on this. He tested this before he sent it over to make sure he wasn't sending me something that wasn't going to work. And he made an important discovery, which I'm glad he made it and not me. And it's to do with this transformer. Blitz's video is in German and he suggested he might do an intro for it. He hasn't done it because he's extremely busy. He's in the medical support industry, so uh, COVID's just kept him run off his feet. But luckily I speak fluent German and I'm going to put some subtitles up on Blitz's video or just little excerpts to show what he did to test this before he sent it over. So let's have a look at that. 
Das ist ein Radio hier. Das möchte ich einem äh, YouTube-Kollegen schicken aus Australien, dem David Tipton, dessen Kanal ich unbedingt empfehlen möchte und das tue ich auch äh, in, dem, äh, in der Beschreibung verlinken. Also was Radio renovieren, so mit einer Glühbirne, erst mal 30 Watt und dann so nach 20. Und der empfängt auch soweit. ob er das äh, gepackt hatte und habe ich einen Jesus-mäßigen gepatscht kriegt. Was, was ist denn da los? Das Ding hat einen Autotransformator oder ein Spartrafo genannt. Auf Masse. Seht ihr die Verbindung? Masse. Masse. Und es gibt keine richtige Sekundär. That was it. That was Blitz's experience with this. Uh, he quickly found out this was an auto transformer when he touched the chassis. Having watched that again, I perhaps not as fluent in German as I thought. Thanks, uh, Blitz. I really appreciate him uh, checking this out for me and uh, doing a little video and taking the hit from the hot chassis. I'll remove it from the case. We'll have a closer look and see what needs to be done. No need to remove it from the case. It actually has a little um, service panel on the bottom. It's actually quite modern looking, isn't it? It's um, got some disc capacitors there, and there's a paper one. These are paper done in a um, in a plastic uh, container. So I can only uh, see those ones. There's one hiding over there. Uh, this doesn't look so good. Yeah, this wire here has been getting very warm. It's got the insulation completely removed there. So something's overheating that. So sorry, a bit of a detour there. Let me take this out of the case. All right, I've got it all out. It wasn't as easy as I'd hoped. Um, I had to take this front baffle off as well because it, the wires aren't long enough to get the chassis out while the speaker's still attached. Now, that's got to be the second biggest magnet I've ever seen. That speaker is only 100 by maybe 120. I can't quite see it. Um, so that's, what, four inches by maybe six inches, five inches. I found this little coil in the bottom of the case and uh, it's got an adjuster on the end, so it's got a slug in it. Yeah. So I'll have to find out where that came from. I don't know where that was. Here's all the coils here mounted on that little white plastic plate, but I think they're all there. There's a couple of spare holes, but I don't think that's for that coil. There's a hole here that's got some adhesive on it. I reckon it's out of there. I think it's something to do with the antenna. Before I do anything, I'm going to take this outside, brush all the dust off it, and hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. I took this outside and blew out all the dust, and I used a brush around this area here to clean it up. This area here, I blew it out with a very, very low pressure air and just kind of went through with a little brush to loosen the uh, the dust. But there's so many fine wires in there, I wasn't going to do too much. The piano keys are in pretty poor condition. They'll probably clean up, but they need to be polished. Uh, one or two of them have some sort of either nail polish or some sort of chemical burn on them. So they'll need to be wet and dried back to plastic and then polished again. Um, I can pull them off this shaft now so I can do them individually that'll make it much easier. I removed the speaker from the baffle and you can see the original colour of the fabric there. This has got um, cigarette smoke through it so it smells a little bit, it's not too bad. But I think I can peel it off, perhaps soak it in, a, in some soapy water and, and try and get it back to something like that. It'll probably never get back to that. I think it'll peel off all right. I could probably seal these edges with some lacquer or something. These are the valves that are missing from here and here. Uh, this is the output valve, so it's an ECL82. And this will be a EZ80, I would think. That's a 6V4. Here, EZ80. So I'll put those back in later. Uh, there's a wire floating around. I think it's off here. This is the output of the output transformer, so it'll be a negative feedback, I would think. I'm still struggling with the size of the magnet on this speaker. It's only a four by five inch speaker and the, the magnet's got to be four inches. So I don't know why, I don't know why it's so big. This is the EM80 Magic Eye and I said it looked a bit dull, but it actually looks brand new in there. I think Blitz mentioned this in the video and I think he might have said it was low hour, so he's probably right there. This wire here with the melted insulation is the return from the transformer. So everything goes through this wire. So there's obviously a high current draw item in here somewhere, probably a capacitor. But I'll, I'll just pull out the schematic and have a quick look through that. I have a number of circuit diagrams. This one's not particularly clear, uh, but it does have the EZ80 as the rectifier. So this is what mine is. 
but I do have this drawing here which is much clearer uh, and the only thing is they've taken out the EZ80 and put in a 1N4007 diode and a little dropping resistor. So for the purpose of the explanation, I'll use this diagram. The red wire that was disconnected is probably one of these, well it is one of these. It's either going to ground or it goes back here to the bottom of the uh, cathode. So that'll give a bit of negative feedback. The coil that I found at the bottom of the case was this one here and it's an IF drain so any 455 that's coming in through the antenna gets drained off and doesn't go through the radio because it's at the same frequency as your IF. So I may just leave that disconnected, it's not needed anymore and it can start to encroach on the reception area. So some of the stations down the bottom of the radio might get slightly attenuated. Here's the power supply section of the radio and as Blitz pointed out there's the ground there and a ground there. This ground is connected to the mains, so uh, depending which way you put it, you could put the active on here. Uh, the auto transformer here, and that goes straight to ground as well. The auto transformer's only got one winding on it, and it goes all the way across, and there's little tappings off here. And you can pull out various voltages as you go along this winding. And they're pretty much the same as a, a normal transformer. It works much the same. Uh, it just has the primary and secondary all incorporated into one coil, but they're still laid on top of each other. Now, the advantage is that these are cheap to make, one coil, so a lot smaller, a lot lighter, less copper used, and you can take the power off here. This is the 220 volt one, so it's got a little coil there. Uh, if you want to switch down to the 110, you'll actually have two cores there, and you can almost double the voltage, so you'll bring it up to whatever this is here. This is probably about 200 volts. I haven't got any voltages on here, uh, but it's probably about 200 volts. So your 110 will come in and get multiplied twice and come out here at about 200 volts again. So they're quite good. Uh, the disadvantage is there's no isolation between the radio and the power supply. So uh, your, your mains voltage is also on this side of the radio. This is the wire here that was melted. Um, it's carrying all the return current. There's an across the line cap there. So that needs to be replaced with a hex cap. That's the cathode bias capacitor, so that's an electrolytic, and that's right, that's 100 UF. Wow, that's high. All right, I'll have to see what's in there. That doesn't, doesn't seem right. Here's the other two electrolytics. They're both 50s, so they've got to be replaced. Uh, those may be what's causing the overheating of that wire. And unlike what I normally do, I'm going to replace these capacitors first before I do anything else and need to reconnect the wire up here that's off and a few other things so I'll do all that and uh, I'll come back and we'll try testing it. Just setting this up to put some power on here's the capacitor, the filter capacitor, it's got 2 by 40 UF it should be 50, this is a replacement capacitor, it's made in Poland and it's date stamp 73. I'm pretty sure this radio is from the first half of the 1960s. I've taken that capacitor out of the circuit and I've put two temporary ones here I've ordered some new ones that'll fit into the size of this can so uh, they're coming tomorrow now before I put power on, I was doing some continuity tests, so I've got a meter on the power lead into the radio and I have the other end connected to the chassis. Push one of these switches which should put power on, it's not changing, it's still open loop. I found this home repair here, a bit of tape over two different coloured wires and if I touch that, it's making contact. So that has to be looked at first, so I better pull that tape back and see what's inside there. There it is. It's two bits of wire wrapped around each other and a bit of tape, so it looks like Eastern Block home handymen are no different to Western home handymen. I'll fix that up and we should be able to put some power on. Uh, I'm all set now to try this out and it should work because Blitz had it running. I'm pretty sure that Blitz didn't have an isolation transformer, um, so I've got one in here and it will protect me, so I shouldn't get a shock. I've got that on 220 roughly. I've got it on dim pole, so I'll put some power on. I have the medium wave selector switch pushed in and there's an antenna on, so it should all work. It's warmed up, uh, the magic eye is there, can't see anything in there either. It is on. Is it? Oh, there's something there. Ooh, doesn't sound right. There's a very, very soft station there. I'll try shortwave. I, 
I'll put it on long wave, it's really no value. I'll put it back on medium wave. All right. So, there's, there's nothing. You know, there's, there's some crackling there, so the amplified part's working, but nothing else, so... Have it on. So, I'm um, not sure what happened there. I think I knocked the transformer here. Oh, there it is, look. Everybody together, face and celebrate it. Ah, okay. So, one of these wires. Well, they're just going. Warren, that report from Carly Williams. Well, finally today, it might be a public holiday in South Australia today, but the politicians are on the hustle with the state election less than a week away. While incumbent Stephen Marshall is campaigning on his government's response to the COVID pandemic, his opponent... Yeah, there's something loose in here somewhere. It might be on the transformer itself. South Australia hey, since the it's last working. election. Rep Bernie... Sounds good, actually. The South Australian election will be a test case for the impending federal election. Yeah, I forgot to mention I changed the coupling capacitor to the output valve just for safety. Yeah, it's not easy way we have found uh, it's not too bad. I was going to say, Jess, Kara Manning and the water. It's not picking up some of the weaker stations. Now, that's a very weak station, and there's a lot of background noise. I can't expect too much, of course, because it's only a four valve reflex set, so it's designed for in the city use. Uh, so it's doing about 21 watts here, roughly, and it's only pulled the power down to 199 or 200 from 220. So that's not bad. It's not pulling a lot of power. I'll change some more capacitors before I go to full power though. So what I'll do now is replace the remaining capacitors. There's not a whole lot of them. And uh, this, look, there's one here. It's got a big crack across it. Here's the across the line capacitor and somebody cut that out previously. Not a bad idea, seeing it's got to be split down the center there. And of course I'll replace this wire here that's burnt. So not a whole lot to do in here. I'll get started on the capacitors and checking resistors. After I finished videoing yesterday, I realized I hadn't tested the long wave and short wave. This is long wave, that's the medium wave, and that's the short wave. So after dinner, I came out and the long wave worked all right. We knew the medium wave worked. When I put it on short wave, it didn't work at all. And from the way it was acting, I knew the oscillator wasn't working. I watched a bit of Blitz's video again that he did on this radio, and he had it running on short wave. So I thought maybe I broken some of the wires in here when I tried to clean it very carefully but maybe I broke some. So I've checked all the wires in here and I cannot find anything wrong. These three are the antenna coils, that's the short wave, medium wave, long wave. These are the oscillators, there's the long wave, medium wave and short wave. So the problem is up here somewhere. So this has a quite heavy wire going to ground, that's no problem. There's a very fine wire. I disconnected it from this point here and I checked it for continuity and that's fine. Then I wondered if the uh, selector switch maybe wasn't working properly. So I buzzed out all the contacts and the selector switch is okay as well. So having checked all of this and I'm happy it's all working, I'm not sure where the fault is. Now I know Blitz had this running on shortwave, but I will just forget that and I'll just do a standard troubleshooting and forget anything I know already and uh, see if I can find it. So what I would normally do once I've worked out that the oscillator is not working is check the voltages on the valve, the mixer valve. Before I do that, I also remembered why this speaker was intermittent. That wire is not even soldered on. So I'll put a dob of solder on there first, then I'll check the voltages. I've got the power on. Here's the bottom of the mixer valve here. We'll check some voltages. I hope you can see this is the small print. There's the ECH81, that's the mixer. Here's the oscillator section of a little triode and it's coming around here. Um, there it is, 95 volts that should have on it. And there's a resistor, the power supply is coming up here through the resistor, and we should have 95 volts. So here's the oscillators, and that'll be short wave. And I can see that because that says five and six, that's switch five and six. And there's short wave there, and it says five and six closed. So that one's the short wave. What's the other one? 16 and 15. Um, yeah, there it is there. I think they're the two that I need to worry about. That one and that one. All right, so let's see what we've got there. 95 volts we need. 
I'll find a ground to put that on. That's a good ground spot there. Right, I've got it selected to medium wave. So uh, this is pin, uh, that's nine, so that's eight. And what do we got? 80 volts, that's okay. I've clipped that on there, I had to move the camera to do it. Now if I push that down, we should have nothing. Hang on, medium wave, 80, what do I say, I need 95, but it's on dim bulb at the moment, so that's off. <laughs> Long wave, that's working. Medium wave's working. Short wave, nothing. How's that work? That's where it's coming from, 141. So it goes there, and then there's nothing there. It can't be the resistor, it was working on the other two wavelengths. It's dropping 141 volts across that resistor. Hang on, we'll have a look at the schematic again. Uh, so what's going on? There's that resistor. It's dropping 140 something volts across there when I put it on short wave. So the only connection is here, and it goes so the short has to be in here because that's going straight to ground. But that's a coil that's always going to short. Oh wait, look, there's a capacitor. Ah, but the other two work. Well, so why would they work and not? Ah, they've got a second capacitor. All right, so that means that must be passing DC and dragging the current down has to be that. I wonder where that is. I didn't have to look far, it's in here. So that's it there, it's a styro capacitor, they're usually pretty good. I can test this because I can put the lead on here, so that's got 144 volts or something on it, and we can see here it's dropping 140, right, there it is. So if I put it on that's going up here, if I put it here, if that capacitor's crook, will be dropping 140 in exactly what it's doing. So that capacitor is no good. Now that would have been the last thing I would have thought of. So I'll just cut it out, I'll tack in a new one and we'll see what it does. I've taken that old styro cap out of the circuit down the bottom here and I've put in a little 470 mica cap. It's kind of a dwarf one because I'd used it once before and um, didn't finish up using it obviously. So uh, let's see, I've got the power on. That's on flat out still doesn't work. I'll take, uh, hang on, I'll take that off there because that'll be affecting the oscillator. Ah, oh, there it goes. Now it's working. Now it's the middle of the afternoon so don't expect to get much here. Yeah. But it is tuning. So it sounds like China or somewhere. Uh, we get a, quite a bit of the Chinese stuff coming down. Right, oh, stuff from Asia at least. I'm not sure if it's Chinese or what it is. Um, so yeah, good. Okay, that's a good fix. I will put a new capacitor in. I'm getting new stock in in the next few days, so I'll put a new one in. All right, I'll go back to my original plan, which was to start changing the capacitors. I've got the electrolytic capacitor in the chuck here. Uh, now it only grabs the end there, so this is very dangerous. I'm going to try and machine that end off there so I can pull the innards out. Now most people sensibly just peel it back with a screwdriver and then kind of clean it up a bit and then crinkle it back again later on and you really can't notice it. I do have the lathe so I'm going to try and just machine that off neatly and that'll give me a nice neat finish. Now of course because it's only held right at the end there and it is aluminium that's likely to give. I'll do it very very slowly. It's likely to grab and just destroy the whole thing so we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to go very, very slowly. This will take a while. Okay, uh, that started to move. So this isn't going to work. I'll be able to pull that out. I hope I haven't dented it. 
Yeah, it's put a little dent in it, that's not too bad. So I'll go to a plan B, I'll just file or sand that off. So what I'm gonna try now is to sand it away with the disc until it's able to come out. Got pretty close to the edge there, that should just come out, there it goes. It's got some sort of rubber seal in there, I'll have to try and get through that. I think that rubber seal goes all the way down, so I'll just cut it with a knife. Oh, there it goes. Oh, that was easy. I've drilled a hole in the centre there, it's probably 7 sixteenths or something. I'm just trying to get my long nose pliers in there. If I can grab it, it'll turn. There it is. So that's come up pretty clean. So I'll finish cleaning that up, dispose of all this, go and have a good wash, and uh, I can restuff it. I've made up a little capacitor pack to fit inside the tube. I drilled some holes through the plastic cap here to pick up the, the solder tabs. Um, now this one's ground, so it's on its own. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. Before I put it into this can, I want to make sure there's absolutely no chance of it shorting. So I'm going to put an extra bit of um, heat shrink around it. And that'll give it a double layer of heat shrink against the outside of the can there. All right, that's all done. And I will just put a little nick in there. So that if that capacitor ever lets go, it can have somewhere to vent. So that'll do. And the can can go on top. And I'll just solder these onto the tabs and go and round this off. I'm trying to think of a good way to roll this in and I can't think of one. It needs to be rotated and a bearing run around there to, to push it in. But I'm going to try doing this. I don't know if it's going to work. I have to say that has come up really nice, really nice. So yeah, you can do it. As with a lot of things I do, there's no need to go to this length. I just do it so that I know that I can do it if I need to in the future. But uh, gee, I'm impressed with that. That's good. I've changed most of the capacitors. There's still one to do. And that's this one here on the output transformer. I'll do that when I redo the wiring here. I have put this little coil back in. I've glued it back in, but it's not connected. I won't connect it. It's not needed anymore. I have a new across the line filter there. That's an X-graded cap, if you want to call it that. I replaced the burnt out wire. And here's the casualty list. So uh, not a whole lot in here. As I said, there's one more to do. This capacitor's got 1963 on it. I saw something else that was September 63. So it was built um, after 1963, I guess, or September 63. One of the gentlemen that sent me a schematic for this told me that the resistors will be no good. They're, they're rubbish. This is the only one I changed, and it's only because it fell apart. I do need to put the electrolytic in, but before I do that, I want to have a look at this tuning capacitor. Um, you can see here that it's angled that way, and it's also pointing down that way. And I noticed when I first unwrapped the radio that this uh, shaft, the tuning shaft, was against the dial glass on this side. There's three screws holding it in. All I need to do is undo those three screws and probably just replace the rubbers there. The screw goes into the capacitor, so it's just a matter of unscrewing it. There's a the spacer there and it's got a little boss on it. I wasn't expecting that. I'll take the other two out and we'll see what's going on. There's the three spaces, they're identical. I assume one of them was going to be different, but it's not. Anyway, I'll put new grommets in here and just put it all back together. I've put the new rubbers in, and I've got to say it was a struggle, but I've got them in. And I'll just do these up. And they should bottom out. They should tighten up onto that little boss. There we go. Uh, I'll turn it over, we'll have a look. That's done the trick, it's nice and straight. I can put this capacitor in. I'll put the capacitor in there and do the nut up and just so there's no confusion I've put restuffed on the bottom of it 2022. Alright I've just got to attach the wires on there now and that part's finished. The capacitor's fitted I've soldered the wires on and there's a little strap running down to the chassis there for ground. I've cleaned up the transformer a bit I've changed the capacitor on there so I've changed all the capacitors I think need changing at this stage I also did a bit of cleaning up. I've cleaned the valves and a bit, bit of cleaning around uh, the areas I hadn't done before. 
I've also had it on full power. I took it off dim bulb and put it on full power and it's working fine. At the same time, I checked some voltages and the voltages were up because this is going to run on 240. It was only designed to run on 220. Uh, what I found was running it at the 240 volts, uh, the filament voltage was up to about uh, 6.7. So I've just popped a little uh, 100 ohm resistor in the line into the radio just to pull it down a little bit. It won't make a whole lot of difference, but it should pull the filament voltage down a bit. Now Australia's official voltage is 230, like the Europeans, um, but ours is consistently 240. Uh, if you look at the voltmeter there, yeah, 243. So that's pretty typical, particularly this time of the day. The solar panels are all running, so it'll get higher than normal. I'll put some power on. I've got it pretty close to 240 volts there. So I'll power the setup. I've let this warm up for about a minute. I can check the voltage of the filaments on this globe here, 6.3. So that's exactly what it should be. So I'm using the 240 volts as a nominal number. It'll go higher than that during the day. It'll go lower than that in peak hours. So um, it'll run around the 6.3, which is what I want. Uh, something else I did last night was with this tuning capacitor. The quadrant here that I'm pointing to is made up of two plates and it has a spring between the two plates to take up any lash uh, in the gears. So when you turn the pinion, it's very instantaneous. It, there's no uh, hysteresis. That wasn't working. The spring wasn't engaged and I don't think it had been set up properly from day one. So I was able to re-engage the spring and I was able to move these plates so they aligned correctly. I wasn't getting full movement on the vanes. The plates were out of sync. So I've adjusted all that and put it back together. But what it means is that the pointer is now out of whack and uh, it actually runs off the end there. So I will need to realign the pointer. The other day when I was trying to troubleshoot this oscillator coil, I put the signal generator on to see if I can get a signal through. And at the time I checked the IF frequency and it was on 455, so there's no problem. So these uh, two transformers here are tuned to 455, so I don't need to check that again. And I'm loath to try and play with these coils if I don't need to. So I think the only thing I need to do is adjust this uh, pointer to the right position. So I'll check all that in a minute, but uh, I think that's all I'm going to need to do for the alignment. I've hung the dial glass on here. I've centered it on these two shafts, which you can just see. There's a little divot in that white line there on the medium wave, and that's 500 meters, which is equivalent to 600 kilocycles. I've got the generator on 600, and I've connected the generator to the antenna of the radio through a 200 picofarad capacitor. Bit of volume, and clearly we're away. It'll be down here. Yeah, it's way down there. So I need to move that along around about 12 millimeters, half an inch. To make it easier, I've put pencil marks here. This one here is where it's tuned to currently, and this is where it needs to be. That's 600. I've loosened the uh, string off here. Should be able to pull this along. All right, I'll reconnect it. I've moved the pointer away from the 500. We'll see how close we are. I think that's good enough. I've moved up to the other end of the scale. There's the white dot there. That's under 200, which is equal roughly to 1500. I've put the generator on 1500. I'll just approach it. We'll see where we are. It's coming up right in the middle. So I'm confident the alignment's fine. I'm not going to worry about anything else. Let's just leave it as it is. All right, I'll move on to the next bit. I'm going to have a go at cleaning up these piano keys. Once these are cleaned up, the chassis will be finished. I've got a bit of brass over here. We'll see if it does anything. I think they'll clean up. They do have some, looks like chemical marks on them, like that. Yeah, they're cleaning up all right. It looks like that mark in the center's pretty much come off. It's pretty good. Now, you might be able to see it. Some of them have got little marks on them. It looks like nail polish or something. So I'll see if that'll come off. I might have to use a bit of wet and dry to clean those up, but um, they should be all right. All right, I'll keep going and come back when I've finished. These have come up surprisingly well. I ended up scrubbing them in a trough with some gumption. That's an abrasive paste and that took off most of it. The little marks on it, look, you can't really see them. Now I also used some 1500 wet and dry to take off some of the other marks. I can see there's one there still. I'll go back and do that. Uh, but wet sanding it with that 
um, work pretty well. So I'm going to put it back on the radio. I've put the little piano keys back on the radio and they look really good. Very happy with that too. Uh, the next thing to do is the case and it's in pretty good condition really. It's dirty but generally the finish is pretty good. It's sound, it hasn't cracked. Uh, yeah, so it's not bad. Uh, you know, just a tiny bit of the finish missing. So I'm not going to refinish this. I'm going to leave it as it is. A bit of Romanian patina on it. It'll be good I reckon. The first thing I'll do is take off this little brass trim. I'll just lever that away so I can get at the head of the tack and I'll just pull them out with the pincers. And, and that one. All right, that should be it. I'll polish that up and give it a coat of clear lacquer. I've got a rag here and I've put some turpentine on it. So that should not affect the, uh, the finish underneath, but hopefully it'll take the, whatever is on this thing, it's just awful. So that's coming up okay. Uh, still getting a lot of junk off it. I've done most of the case, but this bit here is just so thick in whatever the, the you know whatever products on top of this that I can't get it off. So I've got some 1500 wet and dry here or waterproof paper, and I'm actually sanding the grime off. Right, that's working pretty well. You can actually see the wood now. Oh, you couldn't ever see the grain before. You could barely see it. So I'll just sand all this off as well. I've got to be careful I don't go through, that's all. I'm using a bit of the 1500 on the top. Uh, this is the second time I've done this. I've done it before and wiped it off. And the black that came off it was amazing. I think I've got it now. I think I've just about got all that uh, black, whatever it is, off the top. So that's come up really smooth. It's got rid of any little lumps that were on there. There was bits of something sitting on there. And of course there was the paint spots on it. So they're all gone now. So I'll do the sides. I've done the front. Uh, I'll clean it all up and then I'll put a finish on it. I've cleaned everything up. I've washed it with wax and grease remover. That's all I'm gonna do with this. And I'm gonna finish it with some Canaba polish. And uh, this will give it a rock hard uh, finish and a bit of a shine, but it'll maintain the patina the radio has. And this also contains some beeswax. So all I have to do is polish it on and let it uh, dry and about 30 minutes later you give it a buff and you just repeat two or three times to get a really good finish on it. And I've got too much wax on here. And the shock with the Canaba wax is to, to put it on pretty vigorously and it will melt. Particularly when you're trying to polish it off, you need to really get a bit of speed up. So even just doing that, it looks really good. That'll come up really nice. So I'm gonna leave that, as I said, for about 30 minutes and give it a polish. I'll do all the other sides and the front and we'll come back in 30 minutes and I'll polish it off. Now this has been drying for about half an hour, so I'm gonna start polishing. And as I said, you really have to get stuck into it. And that will melt the wax again and make it shine. How's that look? That looks good, doesn't it? Very nice. That's got a nice hard coat on it now and I need to polish the sides as well and the front. I'll put another two coats on and buff between each coat and it should come up with a nice hard wearing finish. I'm ready to put this back in the case now, but before I do it, something I should have shown you before when I was doing the oscillator. To check if the oscillator was working, um, I have this little coil and I don't know what I made it up for. It's about one mil wide, you can use whatever you like uh, and you probably use any coil you like. I made this for a specific reason, I can't think what it was, but this works all right, and I'll show you what I can do with it. There's the oscillator coils on the back there, if you recall, and I've connected the little coil onto my oscilloscope. I'll put this on shortwave to start with, and if I put the coil near the oscillator coils, you can see it on the oscilloscope. And if I change to medium wave, the frequency drops. If I've got a long wave, it drops again. So that's showing that the three oscillators are working. So I didn't have to break into the circuit. I didn't have to measure voltages. I could just see it straight away. Now that's, if you don't have an oscilloscope, of course you can use other methods to check the oscillator, a portable radio, AM radio, tune the IF above the, whatever this radio is set to, and you should get some interference. You can measure the voltage drop across the little resistor and the oscillator. Just Google it. There's plenty of ways of doing it. I have the oscilloscope, so I used that and it took only seconds to do it. 
don't use my coil as a template or anything. I mean, it worked, but it was made for some other reason. Um, there are sniffers you can make up yourself if you like circuits. I think Paul Carlson's got one on his website. So if you want to make a proper sniffer, that's good, but this worked in my case. All right, I'm going to put this back in the case. I've set everything up, ready to put this back together. Uh, I've put the glass back on here. I've cleaned it up and it looks fantastic. That cleaned up really nicely. That was black before. I have the case at the back and that looks great too. It's The finish on it now is brilliant. So all that's left to do is reassemble it. The only way I can see to get this in here is to drop the whole thing in vertically with the uh, speaker and the chassis at once. Alright, I've got that fascia down so I can try and drop the chassis back with it. Oops. Now I've got the magic eye jammed in there. Okay, I think we're sitting down. I was going to show me putting in the magic eye there. I could barely get my hand in there, much less another camera. So I've spent a bit of time and sort of routed the wires correctly so the magic eye is sitting roughly where it needs to go. I need to secure this front baffle board. There's five screws holding it in and I can almost not see two of them. So I should have put that in first, then put the speaker on it and then the chassis at the same time. Anyway, I should be able to do it. I might have to just pull the chassis up a little bit. I managed to get the screws into that front baffle plate, so it wasn't too bad actually. And I've installed the four mounting screws for the chassis and they're in big holes with big washers so you can move the chassis around to line it up. So I'll turn it over, I'll line up the chassis. I, I really just need to get those piano keys in the center. That looks pretty good. And as far forward as I can get it, that'll all work. Okay, so the screws are firm, but they're not done up tight. I can now tighten them up and it shouldn't move. All right, that's all centered. So I will put the magic eye in and it has a little cardboard heat barrier there. All right, it's just a little spring clip there that holds the whole thing together. You can rotate it, so I'll have to go around the front and just see how square it is. I've got my hand in behind there, and I was just trying to straighten it up. I think it needs to go up a little bit. Okay, that's probably close enough. I'll see how it goes when the set's turned on. I've cleaned the knobs up, so I put them on. All right, time to give it a test. Um, I cleaned this cloth up. I took it off and cleaned it, and I took hours to try and get it on straight, but it's wavy and I eventually gave up because I was going to tear it if I just kept doing it. It looks all right, but it's a little bit annoying for me. There was provision to put a second light in there, uh, which I toyed with. And then I thought, no, it only ever had one light. I'll leave it exactly the way it is. All right, there it is. Sorry, it's you working. I, I don't know. I just, maybe I'm being really optimistic. Mm. Or, or Very good. Now it's a bit later at night, so I should get some more um, stations. Let's see how it goes. I'm gonna give that a go. I'm sure it'll help me. It will. Yeah, I don't know what that channel is, that station. No matter what walk of life or culture you come from. Things like the Big Dipper and the Pleiades. There is evil, evil in the world. Um, and that so that's a hard to get station normally. We have yeah, I don't know what that is either. That might be the racing station. Yeah, that station's that station's very hard to get. That's coming through clear. Now these will be regional stations I'm picking up here. I think that's Rockhampton. One of one of those ones there is Rockhampton, which is 300 k's away, somewhere like that. Maybe maybe a bit more. I'll just try and find some music. Yeah, it's not a fantastic sound. Small speaker, it's not doing too bad for, for a tiny speaker like that. So working really well. I need to put the back on. The back's outside. I'm trying to straighten it out a bit. 
So in the morning I'll take it out and I'll put the back on and this will be done. I've been squashing the back under two boards, I'll take it out. There it is. I put some glad wrap on both sides of it and I put a bit of water on, I sprayed some water on it. So that's come up nice. That's good. I have the back ready to put on. I've already fitted the base. It's off an old television or something. It's not the original base. So anyway, it's on there. One last check inside. All the valves are sitting there. Yeah, it looks good. So I'll put the back on here. Have some nice brass uh, screws to put in the back here. Now, as I recall, and I haven't checked this, I should have, um, I think Pol uh, not Poland, I think Romania was um, under the control of Ceausescu, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, of course, but uh, he was a Communist Party leader, and I think from the 50s, late 50s, probably up until the fall of communism. I don't think they were ever in the USSR. I think they were a communist country, but they weren't part of the USSR. Anyway, I'm sure someone will tell me. But I remember Ceausescu was in the news quite a lot, and I can't remember whether he was good or bad or indifferent. That's on, it looks good, it's nice and flat now. This panel I redid with Retrobrite. It didn't quite clean it all up, but you know, it looks much better than it was. Now, an odd thing was this antenna hole didn't line up with the antenna socket. So I've punched that out again and uh, to get a hole in there. So, so I don't know how it went through life for the last 60 odd years with uh, not lining up with the antenna. There's no internal antenna. Anyway, that's the last piece to go on the Carmen 2. It's finished. It's all finished and I'm delighted with it. It's a Carmen 2. It's made by Electronica in Romania, probably about 63, probably the end of 63. But it complies with the European radios of the time, Magic Eye, Piano Keys, Wooden Case. And it's come up really nice. It's, it looks very, very good. The case, which I originally thought was a dead loss, I was just going to strip it and try and start again, it's come up beautifully. It's almost the standout feature of it. I was watching one of Manuel Caldera's videos this morning and he needed some parts and his subscribers sent them to him. And he said this YouTube hobby of radio repair and restore is a community. It's not just YouTube and people putting content on. So there's a little bit of camaraderie there and uh, people have helped me and sent me stuff like Vern and Blitz. Uh, another gentleman contacted me during the week and said, I've got a box of valves if you want them. So he sent them over from Europe and there was those side contact P-Base uh, Phillips valves, so very hard to get. So he said, I'm not using them. He sent them over. So in my retirement, I've found a whole new hobby and a whole new load of friends too. So this has been really good. As I said before, Blitz put an awful lot of effort into getting a radio to send to me, not to mention the expense. So um, yeah, this is going to take a special place in my collection. So thank you very much to Blitz and Vern and uh, Manuel and people that have sent me valves and other things. So generous. So I hope you enjoyed watching this little Romanian beauty come to life. And I hope you can join me next time for my next radio adventure.